Welcome to this session at MapTech Connect on how engineers and geologists are using Maxter digital mine to mill and pit to port software to sustain mine value chain optimization. My name is Jeremy Butler. I'm one of MapTech's global product strategy managers. MapTech partnered with Petra a few years ago after seeing how their innovative technologies could deliver downstream value optimization to mine planners and geologists. When challenged with how with how we can provide significant value improvement to all body knowledge, we found Petra's Maxter product was able to achieve this by creating digital twins for mine to mill optimizations done by ingesting millions of tons of historic data to predict and simulate plant performance using machine learning. Further integration with map tech geology and mine planning tools allows these simulations and predictions to be included in planning decisions for more accurate design, scheduling and blast optimization. This allows for better planning decisions and improved performance across the entire mine, mining value chain. For today's session, we're joined by Zelka Prokodzik, a technical director at Petra with 20 years of experience in the mineral industry globally. She brings domain knowledge to the application of big data and digital techniques to mining and mineral processing. Zelka holds a PhD in energy and com in comminution circuit design and was awarded the TMS Environmental Award. She is the founding director of CEEC International, a global not-for-profit aimed at promoting increased energy efficiency in the minerals sector. Your participation is important to us. This conference is all about connecting and there will be time for questions at the end. You can use the Q&A box on the interface at any time to submit your questions and comments for discussion. If you see your question already, you can upvote it and we'll, um, we'll see that as well. I'm going to hand over to Jelka now. Thanks very much for that introduction, Jeremy. Um, as Jeremy has mentioned, I'm a metallurgist and mineral processing engineer, and I'm really excited to be talking to a bunch of geologists and mining engineers and mine planners. Uh, so please, please forgive me if I if I make some ignorant comments or uh, mistakes around your field, but um, it is mineral processing that I'm, I have a, a specialization in. So Let's get started. We're talking about how engineers and geologists are using mine to mill and pit to port technology. Okay, this is our intro slide. Um, this is probably uh, a clear pictorial uh, representation of our mine to mill pit to port approach. We call this Maxter, and you'll hear Maxter used throughout the presentation. But essentially, Maxter is about harvesting all of the data from the block model, from the dirt, all the way to the concentration plant, so all the way to the processing plant. So what we do is we mar marry and merge all drill and blast data, load and haul data, your fleet management system. We track it through blended stockpiles. We go into crushing, grinding and concentration. So all that information that's quite rich and, um, and vast within that geological block model, which contains geochem, geotech, measure ride drilling data, metaphysics, hyperspectral and, and hydrogeology, all that is tracked through that mining value chain. And that essentially what Maxter is. And we call that, that's a digital twin, a harvesting of data to generate a digital twin of the operation from the beginning of the, of the value chain all the way through to the end. And at the heart of that is the block model because of its richness in information and because all properties dictate all of downstream performance. All characterization methods. So the way that we capture the properties of the ore body as it's passed through the different stages of processing and mining and processing is we do it two ways. The most fundamental way is this um, ore tracking uh, or tracking feature of Maxter, which, like I said earlier, is essentially tracing all of the elements from the block model all the way through processing. What we've got here on the left side is a Google Maps image of a, a Western Australian iron ore operation. Down here is the plant. And around here in this semicircle are the fingers, the blending fingers that feed the primary crusher. So what we've done in this case is tracked two years of fleet management data as well as drill and blast data and block model data merged together. And each one of these dots represent a dump uh, from the truck before it goes into processing. Um, and on this scale here is the weeks 
as which this, this yellow dot was, was dumped, whereas the bluer dots are kind of 18 weeks schedule. So at any point in time, we can understand what's sitting in the stockpile and what the properties of that ore is as it passes into the primary crushing and down through processing. And this is all from fleet management uh, system data. I think it was um, Mindstar in this, in this case. So one way is to track the properties from the, from the ore body, from the geological uh, block model. The other one is using characterization uh, techniques from fragmentation, from your product size distribution. Um, so this is an image um, of a stockpile with, of a loader gonna take this material and put it into the crusher. And what we've done is we've developed uh, using AI, a, um, a representation of that size distribution before it goes into the crusher. Um, so the, using computer vision information, the computer has learned the different size of the rocks. Usually there's a, a basketball here, so you can actually compare the size of the rocks. But based on, um, based on this image here, this is the breakdown of, of material we've got. So most of it is medium size, a bit of coarse, a bit of fine, a bit of coarse. So these are our two ways of, of characterising these methods. And I'll talk a bit about... Um, each one of those in a bit more detail now. I've got a video playing, great. Okay, so ore tracking. Ore tracking tens to millions of tonnes of ore. So as I said, we can, we can look up to five years of historical data and trace all of that material as it goes through the plant. So again, these are our dots, each one of the dumps, and each dump has an ID, and that ID um, carries all of that information through it. So if I just go back to here, I think. Um, maybe here, yeah, right there. Okay, so this dot here has an ID with all of the blast categories that were that were applied to 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 that uh, to that dump, um, and then we can break it down further and look at the different uh, distributions of information within that within that dot or within that dump of the, the, uh, the truck. So this is within our Maxter portal. And this is a way of interrogating your historical data based on um, what was carried through each truck and um, into the circuit. So again, thousands of uh, ores batches matched to downstream processing data. For example, crusher downtime. I'll go through a couple of uh, um, case studies involving crusher performance and mill performance as well as the processing plant performance as we've tracked this material through the plant. Okay. Oh. Okay, fragmentation um, of the underground ore. So this is something that we've developed recently called FragX, which is used point cloud scans like hover map. And this is actually a draw point in a block cave mine. And what we were managed to do was actually generate a size distribution of this material as it's coming out of the, the draw point. Um, this, this data is, is not high resolution, not high quality, but it's certainly enough to help with the safety aspect of this. Um, and we are also um, working with uh, the University of Adelaide, Curtin University, Oz Minerals and BHP on this project. We're part of an ARC with the University of Adelaide to explore the usefulness of, of, of this information um, gathered from FragX. Okay, so this is, this is the fun bit where we talk about case studies. Um, and this is how Maxter, which is essentially the digital twin, which is the, uh, the data set which contains all of the material from the block model all the way through blasting, through um, haulage, through crushing and through the processing plant. So this is what we've merged together. And these are some of the uh, insights and predictions we've been we were able to make from, from, um, from this data set using machine learning, which I'll go into some detail as well. Okay, the first one is a Geomet study. So it's very different to conventional Geomet where um, a whole bunch of drill core is collected and samples taken to a lab, uh, which is quite extensive and uh, quite uh, uh, quite um, quite uh, time consuming as well. So things like um, drop weight tests and bond work index and floatability and all this stuff. And then from that, derivations are made of how this is going to perform in the plant. Whereas Max to Geomet is about 
um, understanding the geological block model properties and seeing how they perform down, downstream and developing a algorithm, a machine learning algorithm or a regression of, of sorts using only information from the, um, from the geology block model. Uh, so this is a, a published uh, case study from Panos, Vanessae Mine, Silver, Gold and Laos. Um, it was done by James Carpenter in 2018. We quote this many times because it, it is available in, in the public domain and information is still being used in their mine planning um, processes. So we, we put together a machine learning model uh, which, which, um, which predicted problematic areas within the pit that were causing low performance in the CIL plant, in their carbon and leach plant. So the problem here was that the recovery in the plant of when processing some kind of ore was dropping low to about 50%. They were targeting 85. So a 50% reduction in, in, um, in recovery. Uh, so they were wanting to understand better which part of the pit was causing this issue. So this is a fly through of the actual operation in Laos, quite lush, bit of jungle. The good thing about this one, it was direct tip into the plant. The plant is just disappearing now. But it'll flip over to the, um, to the, to the mine plan view and you'll see how, where we identified these problematic zones within the pit. So these red and pink blocks um, using our ore tracking, we were able to label these as problematic areas. Um, and uh, this, is, this is a static image of, of the same thing. So these are the different zones within the pit. So the red and the pink relate to low, potentially low, um, low recovery material. And this was put over to one side and not processed through the plant. Um, and as I say, some of this information, some of these insights are still being used now, uh, almost three years later. Okay. Um, well, one more back. Great, back here. I'm sorry about this, this, this banner up the top. But this is, um, there's been a lot of discussion in, in, in the industry about machine learning and how it might be a black box approach. Uh, the techniques that we use are perfectly interpretable. You can actually penetrate the, uh, the machine learning models to see how the internals work. So this is a, a SHAP chart very similar, um, developed by Shapley, who, um, who came up with game theory of all things, but he's got a, a Nobel Prize in, in mathematics. And he was able to interrogate these machine learning techniques, these supervised machine learning techniques, and show uh, people who are interested the parameters or variables that have gone into um, this prediction model, this machine learning model. So on the left here, we have what's called prediction hierarchy. So this feature, this variable at the top, it has the greatest impact on the model output. Whereas this one down the bottom, um, this is from the block model, has the lowest impact. And then those ones in the middle in that order. Um, the interesting thing and the difference between typical regression models and machine learning is that each one of the variables that go into the machine learning is interacting with other variables. So this ANC, I'm not sure what that is, maybe one of the geologists online could could appreciate what that is. But when that value is high, the impact on the, on the thing that you're trying to predict, in this case, um, gold recovery, this is high as well. We're on the left side of this vertical line. But when it's low, um, the SHAP value is low too, and therefore it has a negative impact on the thing we're trying to predict. Whereas these bits in the middle, where it's that purpley color, and there's a agglomeration of dot points, it means that each one of the variables is interacting with the other. Um, so within that zone, it's not just a linear relationship up or down. It can be up depending on, on, on what the next feature is doing. Um, so very valuable insights again from, from machine learning models. Uh, and it's certainly not a, a black box where you don't really know what's going on. Um, and this information when we're generating uh, results and showing, and showing clients um, the insights that are available. This, this is kind of an interactive approach where they give us feedback about whether or not certain features are reliable and how much data is there and so on. 
Okay, so this is this is how it works. This is an interface. This is the Maxter portal. So if you had a geological block model and you wanted to add a additional variable to it, as we did at Banasai, which was um, gold recovery, you would go to this website, secure website. You'd upload your block model, um, and it would go to the cloud, a secure place in the cloud via an API, um, and Petra would populate the predictions and return a block model with an additional field with that recovery number in it. And this is where you access all of those features. This has been sped up a bit. It's been on fast rotate. So this is upload. You browse, you upload it. It fills the population and then you scroll down um, and those colourful blocks are the other populated versions which you can download. Uh, we have availability, and Jerry, Jeremy can talk about this a bit better, linking this Maxter uh, population of the block model with an additional field to Vulcan um, where interoperable. Did I miss something? No. Okay, uh, metallurgical case study number two. So we've talked about Vanessae and the issue that they had with the, with the low recoveries and we've helped them identify blocks uh, that are problematic, that will likely be problematic and they have separated those into a different stockpile area. This case study is about throughput prediction uh, in a block, uh, in an in a iron ore mine, large iron ore mine in WA. Um, and it was really used for mine planning and blending. Um, so, so this is what it looks like. These are images from Vulcan. Uh, this is the actual block model. Um, and the different shades there indicate different mill throughputs. It's, it's quite a large operation with um, six ag mills in operation, five of the six, I think. Um, and each one of those shades indicate the throughput value of, of, um, of that material as it passes through, the expected throughput value as it passes through the, the processing plant. Um, this again is only based on variables that are in the block model, and that's why it's called GeoMet. Okay, next one is, is drill and blast. So we're now moving from uh, inputs in the, in the uh, machine learning model, which are only um, geological based, to adding the drill and blast variables, things like burden and spacing, hole depth, um, and explosive type. I'll, I'll talk you through a couple of those. Again, this is a iron ore example, and drill and blast optimization to uh, minimize crusher downtime to blockages at the crusher. So the big issue at this crusher was oversized material um, being fed into the crusher, causing bridging and downtime issues um, and, and really not a safe operation to, to get rid of that material. Rock breaker had to be brought in and sometimes explosive used to, to remove that, that, um, that large rock from the opening of the, the drill crusher. Um, this is an actual picture from site. So uh, Maxter suggested that the region that this material came from would have oversize. Um, and about three days after this uh, algorithm was deployed to site, they managed to take a couple of pictures of what we suggested, what Petra's uh, Maxter suggested would be a problematic area. And lo and behold, there are the rocks that would have uh, crushed the, um, would have uh, blocked the, the crusher once they, uh, once they were received at the, um, at the processing plant. Um, the other part of this is the blast, drill and blast simulation. So drill and blast levers, like I said, of burden and spacing, of blast explosive, of stemming length, these can all be varied to see what is the optimum design for this particular uh, blast. Okay, what's this point? Identify with 78% accuracy location of oversize allows the operation to proactively manage. So yeah, 78% accuracy of um, identifying correctly where they're likely to get these large rocks, meaning that this material can be moved to a different place and not go to, not go to the crusher and potentially cause downtime issues. Okay, so this is, this is one version of the simulation tool, the Maxter simulation tool, where you upload your, um, your block out, your polygon, your blast polygon, um, and then you can change these variables down here are the variables, which are explosive density, uh, design diameter, subdrill, stemming length, burden and spacing. Um, and you can change those and see the impact of uh, downtime on each one of those crushes. 
So if you open up this tab, this is actually a static static view of the of the uh, of the of the simulation tool. But this tab will actually tell you which blocks within the geological block model are likely to have downtime uh, contributors to downtime. Uh, this is a, another case study in the drill and blast space. Uh, so this is to maximise the dig rate of the excavator, the shovel, uh, and crush a throughput and consider the blasting costs associated with that. So the previous one was around avoiding downtime due to these last rocks. This is about maxim maximising um, dig rate and uh, crusher throughput. So again, same sort of interface where you can change these variables, upload your... Um, so select file from here, upload your pol polygon, your block out, the area you're going to blast, and then choose different variables um, for, the, for the blasting rate. Uh, sorry, for the blasting design, and you'll see the impact on dig rate, primary crusher throughput. And then here we've got differences um, on those. And I think there's also a cost column here, but it's blank. But if, if um, the client provides a, a cost estimation equation, we can certainly put that in there. Um, this is quite controversial, but what we found when we did this, this work for this client, we found by switching to AMFO, there was at least a 30-35% 30, reduction in explosive costs uh, compared to the other explosives which are used here. And I'm not sure what they were, but um, AMFO was, was certainly one of the cheaper ones uh, and, prov and provided um, same sort of throughput rates. Okay, so this is... Um, a drill and blast um, tool as well, a different type of tool. So rather than a static simulation, you can actually interrogate the historical data um, automatically and, uh, and, and uh, see which, which um, blast designs had the best performance. And if you're looking at optimising certain, um, if you're looking at optimising certain parameters like throughput, um, like dig rate, it would, um, identify designs which will contribute to that based purely on your historical data. So this is a good tool for engineers who are starting out, uh, but we find that this tool is great for more um, experienced people too because they like to see how their blasts performed in relation to you know, uh, previous blasts or more recent blasts. Okay, uh, Max Deloid and Hall. So this is basically um, excavator dig rate, again, in, in uh, iron ore in Western Australia. So we managed to, well, this is one of our strongest models. When I say strongest models, most accurate prediction, because we, we don't have all the noise and interference of that, that downstream as the material moves, moves through the value chain. Essentially, dig rate is from the, from the, from the ground, from the block model, um, from the ore into the shovel. And, and these are one of our stronger models. And again, this is really good for long-term mine planning, life of mine stuff, or short interval control. It in integrates with Vulcan, as I said earlier, um, and where you can really increase your fleet efficiency by re uh, reducing over and under trucking. So black block, block by block dig rate prediction accuracy is one to 5%. Okay, so this is where the, the metallurg metallurgist mineral processing person in me gets excited. This is Max to Process, which is right at the, at the end of the value chain. We've talked about Geomet, which is, which is at, the, at the start when we're trying to um, design a mine plan for optimum performance, the best business case. We've looked at drill and blast to see the process variable impact on, um, on throughput and, and uh, downtime. And now we're moving into the processing plant. This is an example from a very large WA copper gold porphyry deposit. Um, it's, it's a metallurgist stream. There's, there's HBGRs, there's bore mills, um, there's a flotation, there's CIL plant, um, and really large stockpiles, hugely automated, and uh, a lot of exciting work happening here at the moment. So our aim here was to minimise the amount of um, copper going to tail. So essentially increasing recovery of the copper um, and making sure that what was going out to the tailings dam had minimal amount of copper in it. So what we did, we used our, our max to process again, where we included the oper operating, uh, sorry, we included the properties of the ore from the block model. It was contained in their fleet management data and harvested all that pie operating data. 
and came up with, um, this is a snapshot of, of PI, the control system that the operators use. And what we did was predict what this tail grade going out to the, to the waste is six hours in advance based on what was coming into the plant and based on the operating conditions. So we will manage to um, accurately uh, aware, make the operators aware of that future tail prediction. Um, and, and this is our prediction. In, sorry, I think the, the red is the assay, the Shifley assay that comes in. And the prediction six hours is the upper band and lower band. And our actual value is the aqua, aqua up and down. Whereas the, um, the pink color is the on-stream analyzer. There's a lot of noise in that, in that analyzer. So we were pegging our results more against the, um, the static, more reliable, we call it truth data, um, coming from the, the, uh, the composite assays. Okay. Okay, so this is where this is where it gets fun for us metallurgists. So if we're predicting what material, what the quality of the material is coming out of that flotation plant, which is called the buffer scavenger tail, we can suggest using conventional mathematical techniques what the operating parameters should be. So here we have PROM is promoter. These are reagents going into the plant, and we're suggesting what reagents and what levels in the cell it would be to maintain optimum performance based on historical data. So Maxter essentially has got a data set, um, a whole framework of historical operating data. And what it does, it matches the geology and goes and then finds periods within that historical data when the plant was running well and says, what, what, what were the conditions? What were your operating parameters? And can these match what's coming up? Okay, so that brings me to the end of, of case studies. Um, what time have we got? Oh, almost done. I'll go quickly through this. Um, one of the issues that we have is, is, is uh, when we're talking to clients is my data is no good. In fact, it's, it's, it's crap and uh, there's not enough of it. There's poor quality data, erroneous fields and strings, and data is just wrong. You can't do machine learning. You can't apply Maxter to this. Um, but that's actually not true. Um, what we do is, is we do auto uh, calibration of key online sensors uh, to control lab samples, similar to what I discussed earlier. We monitor instru instruments for anomalies um, and, we, and we do some real-time model switching. So if a instrument or a sensor falls out or you know, somebody pulls it out of the tank and decides to wash it, automatically another another variable will come into its place um, to make sure that the prediction model still goes forward. Successful implementation at scale. Um, I've only got a few more slides left. I realise I'm running out of time. But we've done this quite a few times. I think we have hundreds of algorithms, uh, machine learning algorithms deployed in the industry at the moment. Um, and we've learned a few things about how to make sure that, that this stuff sticks. And when the next lot of... Um, you know, mill supers or, or uh, senior management people come in, it's still valuable and viable. Uh, the first thing is we need to define the issue to be solved. We work in collaboration with, with the client um, and look at their data and really put the definition of the problem. The second part is open a working framework. We make sure that all that we do is transparent and it's an iterative process uh, with the client and with us to make sure that we're all on the same page throughout this stage. Um, and then when we deploy, finally, the final stage of successful implementation is making, making sure it feels like business as usual. Excuse me. <coughs> so the solution that we provide is built into existing software. We have a partnership with, with OSI Soft and with Mac, uh, MapTech. Okay, this is almost my last slide. This is something completely different. Um, Jeremy mentioned earlier that I'm on the board of SEEK, which is a coalition for energy efficiency and comminution. Comminution is the crushing and grinding of rocks, which really essentially uses up to 40% of the energy in a mineral processing plant. This is a non-for-profit. Uh, we are supported by industry uh, and we take sponsorship and we are all about disseminating information about um, improving energy efficiency. So just a bit of a side there. Thanks for that. Uh, last slide, and I think I can hand back to Jeremy for some questions. Yep, uh, just trying to get my camera back on. Uh, 
Um, sorry, I can't start my camera. Um, somebody else had control of it. Okay, it's back on now. I uh, just thought that we'd go through um, a few uh, Q and A's, and then and then we can close this off. Um, you just talked about implementation. Uh, how long does it normally take to go through those um, those stages for the, the implementation of, of a master project? Yeah, well, thanks for that, um, Jeremy. That's great. Great question. We get this a lot. Um, usually data harvesting, which we do in combination with the client, that takes about four weeks. So that's when we, um, we make sure that we have all the data we need. We go through the different databases with the client and we pull out all that information. That information is uploaded to our secure cloud. Once that information is there, we can typically turn around a medium-sized project within 12 weeks. Uh, so, yeah, 12 weeks is, is, um, okay. is usually the, the time frame needed. Um, and I was also wondering, uh, where has Maxa been applied? Uh, Max has been applied to many industries, um, oh, many different commodities within the mining industry. We're, we're in WA, in iron ore in a big way. We've been in copper gold in South America and, um, and WA as well, uh, and certainly smaller players in, in the Asia Pacific region as well. I think we've got a couple of questions here in the question and answer, Jeremy. Yep. Uh, can you tell us how often Maxa users can update their predictions uh, as new data becomes available? Yep, that's a really good question too. Thanks for that, Peter. Um, typically, we would like uh, every six months to update our um, our prediction models, our Maxter models. Uh, but we are now moving towards what we call Maxter Live, where we have live connections into the data supply with the client, and this will happen automatically. Again, within within um, within a six month period, usually that's enough time to to see the differences in in all properties and and how they've carried through the plant. Uh, and the last question I can probably answer this one is um, how can I yes. interact with my Vulcan and, and Evolution block model uh, with Maxter to share outcomes generated? Uh, so Map, MapTech worked with um, Petra last year to create a, um, a plugin that you can install um, and, and that makes it very easy then to uh, transfer block models from either Evolution or Vulcan into the Maxter system. And then on the other end, um, the Maxter system supports natively reading and, and, and writing um, MapTech block models, which uh, make it easy then to come back to the software uh, once it's had its predictions added to it. Um, all right, that, that closes off the, um, the, the Q&A. Uh, thanks for your time today, Jelka. Um, that was a really good presentation on, on how we can apply new technology to in, improving mining performance. Thank you. We, uh, we hope everyone enjoyed today's session and there'll be a feedback survey after you close the window. Um, and remember that the MapTech Connect 2021 program is running for 24 hours across the, uh, the global business. So there's plenty more presentations if you'd like to attend them. Uh, the details are on our website. Thanks everyone for your time.